If you're looking at criminal justice issues in the United States, it becomes an interesting question, both theoretically and empirically, uh, what, what is the impact of all of these guns? We know that the United States has a much higher murder rate than any other affluent country. And we also know that the United States has many more guns uh, on a per capita basis. We also can look at right to carry laws and say, we know on average crime is higher after these laws are passed relative to the states that didn't pass them. But the big question, of course, is, is crime higher because these laws were passed? So the first thing you would look at is, well, what's happened with incarceration? And it turns out in the states that pass right to carry laws after they pass them, they tend to have a somewhat higher increase in incarceration. So we know that their higher crime rate is not explained by perhaps having less incarceration than states that don't pass right to carry laws. Then you can look at police, and, and it turns out that after they pass these laws, they actually hire more police than other jurisdictions. Um, so once again, we know it's the higher crime rate in right to carry states is not explained by police. Second Amendment is a short amendment uh, adopted in 1791, and it just says a, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, uh, the right of the people to keep and bear arms will not be infringed, shall not be infringed. Uh, and for a couple of hundred years, uh, everyone thought that that, including the Supreme Court, uh, that that was focused on the right of a militia to be part of the uh, uh, process of defense within the states. In 2008, the Supreme Court decided uh, the case of District Columbia versus Heller, which uh, for the first time, in a 5-4 decision ruled that individuals have a private right to keep a gun within the home. It's certainly a, a bad idea as a matter of policy to constitutionalize a, a rule saying that whatever the policy we're going to have for gun regulation has to be the same in Montana versus you know, New York City or the District of Columbia. The next big case, I think, to come before the Supreme Court will be the issue of whether you have a constitutional right to carry a gun on your person. And of course, it's a very controversial uh, thought to, to say that you have a constitutional right to carry a gun on the street. Uh, but I think the fact that the Supreme Court said that the Second Amendment gives you the right to keep a gun in your home when the amendment says you have the right to keep and bear means that they're likely to say you have the right to carry a gun uh, on the street as a matter of constitutional law. What we're trying to do here in the law school is uh, evidence-based law and policy. And so this is just one arena in which many of these same issues of statistical modeling come up. So in, in general, I'm hoping to have broader impacts beyond crime. But there's also something uh, you know, satisfying with the thought that if you can bring more clarity to law and policy in the criminal justice area, uh, you may save uh, people from uh, experiencing violent crime or, or death. And if, if you can do that, that's a, that's a great thing to do as well.